All right, welcome back to PyCSE. Today I want to talk about Newton's method and how we can implement it in Python. And that will give us a good opportunity to pull together a couple of the concepts from the last videos of loops and conditionals and control statements. So the idea of Newton's method is shown here. It's a powerful algorithm for solving equations like f of x equals zero. And we know um, you can see where it might be zero here on the screen. But what we have to do is make a guess of what that answer is and then iteratively find our way like this down to the solution. So before I get into how we do it in Python, um, let's, let's start by looking at how to derive Newton's method and how it ends up working. All right, so we start out with uh, the equation uh, or this graph here that has f of x. <clears throat> and what we're looking for is this point right here. Right, this is where f of x is equal to zero. And we don't know exactly what the value of x is that we need for that. And so what we uh, start out with is, is a guess. So let's say we guess here, x is zero. And f of x here is given in analytical form, so we can evaluate what f of x zero is. So let's just draw a line up here and say this is f of x zero. Now, because it is analytical, we can also calculate the derivative f prime of x at this point. And that's going to be the tangent line, and that's going to look kind of like this. So let's call this f prime of x. And we know this value here is f prime of x zero. All right, so we know what that is. Now, the question is, how do we get from x zero over to the red dot? And what you can see graphically here is that this is closer than we were before. And so we would like to calculate what is x one. And then if we could uh, do this again, we would just come up to here, to this point, calculate the new derivative, and get a little bit closer to x two and so forth until we get close enough to zero that we could say um, that this is x of n where f of x is equal to zero. So we're going to do that, but to take the first step, we have to do, we have to calculate what is x1. All right, so f prime of x is known, f prime of x zero. And we could say that that's equal to the rise over the run just an old-fashioned uh, way of thinking about it. And so when we go from x0 to x1, the rise is 0 minus f of x0 divided by x1 minus x0. Now, we know this value because we can calculate it. We know this value, and we know this value, and we know this value. That means we can solve for x1. So that leads us to f prime of x0 times x1 minus x0 equals minus f of x0. And now we can do x1 minus x0 equals minus f of x0 over f prime of x0. And that leads us to the final result that x1 is x0 minus f of x0 over f prime of x zero. Okay, so this is our, our final kind of key result that matters the most. That is, once we guess our initial value of x zero, we can estimate the next x one from this formula. And then we just repeat it. So x, uh, x two will be x one minus f of x one minus f prime of x one. So this is the formula that we want to implement in Python. And now for uh, something to be specific, let's say um, that our goal is to solve e to the minus x equals 0 0.5. You can do this analytically. That's only nice because we'll be able to check how accurate um, our results are. And this isn't of the form f of x equals 0, right? We need f of x equals 0. Not sure why my uh, screen keeps flashing black there. Um, hopefully that won't happen when we uh, go back to, to Python. So to get that, we have f of x equals e to the minus x minus 0 0.5. And we're going to solve for where this equation is equal to zero. 
All right, so let's move the let's just move this around a little bit. All right, and go back to how to implement this in Python. <clears throat> All right, so to uh, to help us remember what we're doing, let's just paste it down down here. All right, so that that's a, a reminder of the formula that we need to, to do. Now, what we're going to have to do uh, first is is import some libraries. So let's import numpy as np. And then we need to define um, a couple of functions. So let's say def f of x, and let's return np.exp minus x minus 0 0.5. And we also need to define uh, f prime of x. And this is going to be return minus np.exp of minus x. So I just, uh, this is a, an easy enough derivative to implement uh, by hand. And so we just uh, we just put it in. All right, now we, we need to iterate. So we're going to have to make an initial guess. So let's define, um, let's say x0 is, actually, you know, let's just plot this and see what we get. Um, it's always a good idea to plot plot your functions, see how they look, make sure they go through zero. And you can see right here, let's add, an, let's add a horizontal x, x line, plot dot a x h line at zero. That way we can see where the zero is and you can see the answer is somewhere around here, maybe around 0.7, this function crosses zero. So we could guess it uh, a version, let's say 0 0.6 uh, is a good, a good guess. Right. So let's say x0 equals 0 0.6. And we can, let's do a couple of steps manually. Uh, let's say x1 is equal to x0 minus f of x0 divided by f prime of 0. And now let's see what x1 is. It gets a little bit closer. Um, so let's take this number and now put it here. That gets to 0 0.67. Let's also look at f of x1 and see how close to 0 it is. So we have 0 0.01. All right. Keep doing this by hand, 0 0.05. Zero point zero two. Maybe we need more numbers. All right, and you can see each time I do this, this gets a little bit smaller. And as we keep making it smaller and smaller, eventually we have to decide when when are we close enough to zero that we should stop. All right, so now we're at point zero 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 six. So that should give you some idea that we're going to have to make a decision about when we want to stop. All right, so now let's go back and let's see if we can do this in a loop. So let's say, um, let's try doing it for just maybe 10 iterations for now. So let's say 4i in range of 10. Let's say x0 is equal to 0 0.6 as a starting point again. And then we'll say x1 is equal to x0 minus f of x0 divided by f prime of x0. 
And now we need to, um, let's, let's print what x1 is. But we need to update the value of x0 in this case. And so after we print it, let's print two things. After we print it, let's say that x0 is equal to x1, so that when it gets back up to this loop, we have a new, a new iteration. And now this is going to run 10 times. Let's try it out. And what you can see here is we have, in just four steps, we get something that's practically equal to zero. That's pretty remarkable. I think it didn't happen before because uh, when I was doing it manually because I wasn't copying and pasting exactly these numbers, so it was only close to zero. So in four steps, we get to 0.693147 as the solution, and we had to go through all 10 of these steps because we didn't have a condition in there to stop. All right, maybe before we continue, let's just work out what is the analytical solution. Uh, e to the minus x equals 0 0.5. We should take the log of each side. Um, so this should be minus np dot log of 0 0.5, I think is the analytical answer. And we get uh, exactly the right answer um, in here. Okay, so this is the analytical answer. And now let's go back up here and, and ask, how could we make this terminate early? So let's copy this. And now what we'll do is here, let's say if f of x1, let's say um, what we want is is, 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 is it close enough to zero? Now f of x1 could be, um, could be positive or negative. So we probably should see if the absolute value of it. And we're going to say, if this is less than some tolerance, then we break. Okay, so now I have to define the tolerance up here. And here's where you have to make a decision. Um, this should be a number that's relatively small, but not too small. All right, so let's say 10 to the minus six is close enough. And then we see we get three iterations and we get to the answer. Okay, so here we combine the iteration and this control statement and this comparison operator. So if the absolute value of this is less than the tolerance, then we'll break. If not, we go up here and continue. All right, so that's pretty simple. That's just putting those three things together um, in the form of this algorithm called Newton's method. Now, we don't normally do this method in Python because there's this, uh, there are several other ways to do it. So let's look at some of those. So in SciPy, there is a Newton method already. Let's check it out. So over here, we have the doc string. It takes a function, an initial guess, and f prime is actually an optional argument. And here it says it finds the zero of a function using Newton Raphson or Seekin or Halley's method. So you have to read through here and see that to, to actually get Newton's method to be used, you have to provide the derivative. We've already done it, so let's try it out. So we just type Newton f, um, let's put 0 0.6 for x0, and then we put f prime here. And this should give us the answer with hardly any, uh, any effort. Now here, you can also get rid of the f prime and it still works. And it just changes the answer a little bit at the very end because it's using the secant method. And even Newton isn't really the, the tool that we use anymore. The legacy method that I've used for many, many years is fsolve. But the newer version is called root. So let's look at them both. fsolve f0.6. And this gives you an array. And similarly, uh, 
Root gives you something that's a little bit more sophisticated, but it has the same signature. So Root tells us that it took seven function evaluations. This is the solution that it arrived at, and it gives you all this information about the solution being converged and, and so forth. So what, what this shows you is that there's a balance of knowing how to implement algorithms versus knowing what algorithms are already implemented in other libraries. The, uh, the Newton's method is not terribly difficult to implement, but there are a number of places where you can run into trouble. That those places include if you have, um, if f of x is equal to or if f prime of x is uh, equal to zero or undefined at your initial guess, or if you start your initial guess um, at a place where it's going to to stop, like at the um, at the top, um, where it can oscillate around. So there there are some challenges that can uh, arise, but that's not uh, something I want to really dig into today. Today, the main idea was building functions, derivatives. Here we look at a plot of our function. Here we manually went through that uh, equation for how to calculate the next x1. Here we put it in a loop and saw that eventually we have to decide to stop it. And finally, we put in the conditional and control statement to make that happen. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for coming and I'll see you next time.